Good afternoon. Good, good afternoon, uh, uh, Saljak family. Good afternoon, our 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 very special host and a member of Friends of Saljak, Aus uh, Musambewe, and welcome to the club. Welcome also to those who are here the first time and uh, those who are streaming live on Facebook and those who are in the in a Zoom meeting. Uh, welcome everyone, welcome to this uh, bi-monthly leadership lecture that uh, Saljak host as a part of the program, uh, the pillar, our number one pillar of uh, 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 loosening the mind, opening the mind, or what you call uh, empowering the mind, or investing in that mind so that uh, when you move forward, you're going forward with a changed mind that is able to accept change. Uh, these leadership lectures are happening twice a month, as I've mentioned, and today it's our uh, very special one uh, with our incredible speaker, uh, Aus Musa, who is also, as I've mentioned, part of the club, uh, part of the movement of the club. Uh, so for all those ladies who are here for the first time and the gents who are here, uh, this is a family club. Please, we ask you to uh, visit our website, www.salgc.org.za to learn more about the club, our founding pillars, and what you can contribute in bringing this club to its effectiveness in our communities and our families. The club was founded in 2019. We are, we are almost two years now with, uh, since the club was founded. And the philosophy of this club, it's, it's development of family, uh, development of leadership. And we believe that leadership uh, develops or starts at home. Uh, if you wanna see and the type of a family uh, the society has, look at its leaders. Its leaders will be able to tell you what kind of family uh, does our family, uh, our, our nation has. So we believe that uh, a, a family is a foundation uh, of, of leadership. If you fail it there to produce leaders in a home, to teach kids morals at home, that you do not steal, you do not take what is not yours, uh, you did not hurt others and rejoice out of that because that will make you a psychopath. If we fail it at that level, if we fail it at that level, we have failed to develop proper leaders who will take over from us when we're not there anymore. We at Saljek has had so many hypotheses on what could be the solutions to the challenges that our country is facing uh, and our communities are facing. So many hypotheses came into the picture and we, we diagnosed it and we saw that the challenges that are facing our communities is lack of leadership. Many can say politicians, many can say money, but at the heart of it, the lack of leadership, it's what has resulted in all the problems that we are in. Hence the, the mission of this club is to ensure that leaders are developed even bottom up because top down has tremendously failed, we have seen over 25 years, over 27 years, the top, uh, the top down uh, approach has completely failed because we have been waiting for something from the top to come, which is not coming. So our five founding pillars are our unique selling proposition of this club. It's all about building a leader, building a family, building a boy child, building the, fam the entire family. That is why we, we, we have a desk of ladies uh, who are who are uh, supporting the call of of, of Saljak, and we call them friends of Saljak. The reason why we have the desk is we cannot operate without the voice of umama or o sister or utate or whatever, because God has brought you Adam uh, on earth. Actually, has has made Adam on earth and brought him uh, through his rib uh, a helper and a friend and a companion who is a woman and who was Eve, it's called Eve. So if we are going to live in the club and believe that we know it all, uh, you'd notice that uh, our pride as men is what has led us to where we are. Majority of us refuse to accept that we don't know. And majority of us refuses to also accept that we don't know uh, what we don't know. We men have these egos of believing that we know everything. And I will come on to 
So in the club, we want to hear those voices. We always want to hear them from the back, calling us to order or giving us a, 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 a counsel. Because if you miss the counsel of this voice, this is a very crucial voice that you should be getting counsel from because we are all partners in this journey called life. So if we don't partner together in this journey, hear each other, be tolerant each other to accept each other's flaws, we are not going to make it. So we are, we are preparing the foundation for future leaders that are coming. It's, it might not be for us to benefit out of this, but for future leaders that are coming, we are saying this is the foundation that we're building for our children. Because half the time, or majority of the time, we people, we have a tendency of blaming others for everything that is happening around us. We never just point the finger at ourselves and say, but I'm also wrong. So in this foundation, in this club, it is where we build each other without fear or favor, as they said. We build each other as men and we expect uh, to get counsel from the ladies as well, uh, from Abu Mama as well, because majority of us have been raised by single mothers when Abu Baba Bangeko. So we cannot underestimate a role in our societies and home. It is very sad today that our children who are coming in future, some of them, because uh, the illness that has consumed our society, such that in Abu Baba, we are killing our fathers. We are killing our ladies. We are killing our women. We are killing our daughters, to whom our future children, are not our future children, our children now, are relying entirely on the existence of those mothers to be there in their lives to raise them up, the same way as we were raising up our mothers when our fathers were not there. And let me tell you, I, I do not come here to, to make noise that men are bad and all that, and women are, are victim and are all victims and all that. That's not my position to go in. All I'm saying is I'm not going to sit here and point fingers like many people have. All I'm thinking of, okay, whoever didn't do what they were supposed to do or did what they're supposed to do, but now it's my turn. I am here now. Can I forget about saying who did not do what and do my part? Because if we continue in the trajectory of continuing to blame who did what, who sold what, who did what, our turn will pass before we even do anything. We will be remembered as that generation who always pointed fingers, but never saw the death in their eyes. So to new people who are here live on Facebook, in here in the house, I'm saying it's the opportunity for you to stand up and say, I'm not going to keep complaining. I'm going to act and be seen to do something for this nature, for, the, for this humanity, for God's people, for my community, for my family, and for myself. I'm going to raise a hand and be a true leader. And we are grateful that Sis Musa raised her hand and say, you know what? I need to talk. I need to talk, Lana Saljek. I need to talk and share what God has gave me to share with you guys. So we are grateful that this Musa, you have made it here. Welcome uh, uh, here. We are really going to benefit a lot from your talk. Uh, I have gone through your profile myself and I'm very excited. I'm sitting here on the couch to learn more. My advice to everyone who's here is grab a piece of paper, I mean, a, a, a notebook and a pen and be ready to, to get the notes down as Sis Musa will be taking us through this very, very emotional topic that we are going to be talking about today, because this is a repeat of what is happening in our lives. And they say, if you want something to be believed and something to be done about it, keep repeating it until it goes into the thick scar that we humanity seem to be having. So the club also encourages and welcomes young boys uh, who are ambassadors of the clubs. If they're young men or young boys here, we are saying to you, join the club, encourage your peers to join the club and be part of this movement that is anti-bullying, anti-hate of other human beings, anti-taking uh, what is not yours, anti-doing all these things that the Bible even said, do not steal, do not take what is not yours, do not envy what is not yours. And all those ugly things that are happening and become fashionable in our community that you need to take what doesn't belong to you. Saljak is resetting. We are trying, we are pulling our own new world order, our old new uh, total reset, where we say, when it's not yours, it's not supposed to be in your hands. And, and we are all humans who are here in the journey and you can be because I'm here as a brother or as a sister. So your problem should not be only your problem, should be my concern as well. 
because we always say to those brothers out there, if you live in the suburbs and you've forgotten where you come from and you're driving your, your beautiful car, you only go uh, to a car when you go break for others, you're creating enemies also there. So you have the opportunity that you should not miss of mentoring those young boys who envy you for what you have become, who understand that you come from the same school that they are going, uh, that they are attending right now. They look at themselves through you. But if you are there and not encouraging these boys and mentoring them in any way possible, you're creating an enemy for the future. Because whatever you do not change now, your lineage and the generation that comes after you will inherit it. So we leave the branded subject. We encourage every leader in the club to make their beat. Look around, pick up a young girl, to coach them, train them, take a young boy, a young boy, a young man, young boy, take them and train them, uh, sit them in the park and share with them the leadership that you know, what you have become. Show them how far you have become, the journey that you have become, so that they don't see a life as being as hopeless as sometimes it becomes overwhelming even for us adults. With that said, I would like to quickly hand over to the chairperson who is now the new host as an announcement perhaps today. The new host of our leadership lectures will, as from today, be leadership uh, which is the club's managing director, long-term member of the club and a leader. Uh, we are grateful that he has agreed to take over this huge responsibility as we shifting things and getting other people in other positions and responsibilities so that the club becomes as effective and efficient as we initially planned. Latima Jogan, thank you very much. I'm handing over to you. And once again, welcome Sis uh, Musa and welcome everybody who has come to Saljak's leadership lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Can, can we just unmute and just give our chair a round of applause? I know that we don't do this, but this is one of a special day where I'm taking over. Uh, the young generation, the under 25, <laughs> are taking over. So let's give our chairman a round. <laughs> thank you very much, Chair, for that. And thank you very much to everybody that joined us today, including those that are on Facebook. And thank you very much to Usis Mosa. Today is the last Sunday of Women's Month. A lot has been done the last few months, the last few weeks, celebrated, commemorated, loved, but there's also one thing that has been going up this month. A lot of women have been killed, they have been raped, they have been abused. And today as Saljek, we are saying not only we're giving Osis Mosa the platform and the opportunity to share her story with us, but we are saying to every man on this call, even those on Facebook, it's time we stop the madness. It is time we take the stand as men and stop the madness. Look at the guy next to you. Look at the guy opposite your house. Look at the guy sitting at the corner. Engage and tell them, Bafit, enough, it's enough. And today, it's an honor and a privilege for me to be introducing a great woman. If you know Lavela, if you know Zola, uh, everybody that went to SOA today know that Zola was known for one thing. So anybody that comes from that area, is fearful, is strong. You look at Mendoza. Mendoza is the only guy that when he had a story of Lebo Matosa passing away, he said he can't believe this is like a dream come true. But that's what people from Zola do when they hear stories from other people. Musa is not just a speaker. She's a former radio host. She is... She's a former radio host. She's a transformational speaker. She's a sister. She's a friend to many. She's a mother to a daughter. She's a grandmother also to a little, little granddaughter. She, she's the only person I know that went to Home Affairs and changed her name from Pindile Primrose to Musa Blessings. I'm sure she's going to tell us why she changed her name. But today, what I'll advise everybody on this call is to have a piece of paper, as the chair has said, have your pen ready, but, but, have your box of tissue ready. It's going to be an emotional roller coaster for the next hour and a half. And also have those questions coming. Sis Musa, are you ready? Sir, I'm ready. Sis Musa is ready to wow us, guys. Let's welcome her. Let's give a round of applause. Let's listen to Sis Musa and let's not disturb her until the last 
sentence. Sismosa, over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, who is here, all the leadership, uh, um, everyone who's here. Thank you for taking the time to join us, the chairs and the team and everyone. Um, but so much and since the debut, I love to hear women speak. So I'm very sure to be one. <laughs> that is interesting. I hope that this someone out there. Um, I have written down because I respect everyone who's here. And two hours time we have, I'm going to try to show everyone to discuss. It's called something that comes out uh, from someone uh, who is going to be able to learn out of it. Malami Ngumosa already said, I was born, bred, and battered in Wetu. Nemak Uka, Pabu Masters, Basses, that will be heaven, Uka, you know, Salah, he believe anything in that, you know. Um, I broke this down in, in segments just so that I can touch a each of the thing and try. It's not possible for me to share this story even in four hours because my entire life. But my is of the scale that was raised by Oko. So all of you who knows how it was raised by Oko, the humble background that was Ezola, where at some point it was a tired days, busy, they would um, balance them on a machine, you know. But Koko gave us good things that we're supposed to learn as girl children that you must come home, you must be clean, you must take care of yourself, this is what you must do, and like that. It was an ordinary form. If you get to have a space in uh, you, uh, you know that you have to be caused uh, a setup of where you sleep would be a, a room, and that was my comfortable space. If there's visitors, you will move and have to sleep in the gym. And, um, so we grew up in that way. Uh, my grandmother used to make clothes for me. You can see now, I love my traditional, the, the African print. I wear it a lot and I, I wear a lot of dresses. Um, I will, I will understand my things. But what my grandmother used to do to make a living as a domestic worker, she would, she would make a pillow, pillow. So she had sponge, I don't know who got it. We would sit there with a knife to make this, um, in inside of the of the pillow of the pillow and then she will buy a material that's big to make the cover of that thing so what she do is the off covered material she would stitch that again to make it another material to make our dresses so people use to last about my pinifa you know because we never had things that are bought a jet or a pep whatever store that was there so if you want me Christmas, get something that's what, but otherwise it's something that someone would have left you and maybe from the other members of the family, if it's, yeah, it's small or they've got more and they will give it to us. And trust me, guys, it was comfortable. That's what we knew because we never slept hungry. Fast forward. So uh, I started to when I was young, I was here. I'm going to fast forward to that. And I finished I was 15. When I was 16 years, I did not know what to do. And uh, but then, um, I started working most when I was young in, in my bed. When I started working, I went as a, um, a data capture that year and I was very young. So God has blessed me with grace. I think I must say that I'm not bragging, but appreciating what God has done. So it was there, I said that I'm going to then, because at, at home in the past world, they could not be able to have money that would um, take me to varsity. So what then happened? Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay, sorry. No, it's loud All right. Yeah. I so mean, um, the video. okay. Sorry. Okay, Just that's fine. If you can hear me, it's all right. Um, it's me that's not hearing you. I'm, I'm I'm thinking that you can hear me. But then I'm going to continue. So I I studied. And I did and qualified for CIAB, which is a BCom in banking. And um, after getting that, I, thank you. <laughs> I didn't, okay. So I did my CIA, which is a BCom in banking. I worked for all the banks and it was via Venta, my startup hack that people would call a startup hack was then over billion, zero on the brand new, was delivered at work. And they actually even had it on top of the trailer. I don't know what's happening with my video. 
they had it on top of the trailer and um, everyone at work would see this car that was brought here and the ribbon and everything and people you know like we wanted to know this and that's getting this i remember that call in that sorry, car Musa. Uh, that, Musa? you know yeah. uh, sorry the network is, is terrible can you just please ask to switch off the video and then we'll still hear you then we'll switch it all on yeah. at the end thank you that's fine yes all right is it better now? Much better, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Yes. Um, so I had this car, a Land Rover Freelander. I remember when after when we picked it up, my aunt was driving the car back to Ezola. You have grew, you, you grew at Zola. As we got off from the main road to the street that's coming from home, that long distance, that car was with the footsteps all the way, beep, 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 so that the neighbors would know that this girl that comes from this home where, where, where things are not good, you know. Uh, yes, she is now, she's driving this car. So, um, so that's what it meant. But not only did that happen to me, driving a car like that in the year that I did meant that you would get this courtesy calls from a uh, Land Rover where they will call you and say, how are you, ma'am? Are you Musa? Are you Pindi? Yes, I am. Uh, we're just checking how is the car treating you. I never even knew that that, that existed. So they would call me like weekly to check how is the car treating me. Uh, going forward, um, this time around, the call was different. So they called me, it was the afternoon. Uh, Miss Mbeu, you hold the car. So I explain and I tell them how the car is treating me and everything. And they tell me that there is something that might be uh, a problem. So my car might have a latent defect. Now, it's something that I won't be able to see with my naked eye because I'm not an engineer or I want to know what is wrong. So they asked from me that, can we come and pick up the car? Uh, the reason why we're doing that so that you can check if your car is amongst those that has got this latent defect. And there I was, I'm like, okay, no, it's fine. You can do it. You can come tomorrow. So they told me, no, it only takes 45 minutes for us to come and, and, and pick up the car. And, and, do, and do the check and then we'll bring it back to you in the afternoon. Following morning, I'm ready, I'm driving this new car. It's still, you know, I'm still happy and all those things. So they come and pick it up, I give them the keys. I also loved because they were wearing the a uniform, branded something that shows them that they come from Land Rover. That to me was a beautiful brag because I know how it was to be the first person at home to have a brand new car where no one has ever had it. Even the car that was there was my uncle's, but it was a very old car. So everything was happening to me for the first time. I was the first girl to Asian, even own a car. So they came to pick up the car, gave them the keys. This one day, now I've got a medical aid, I'm employed by the bank, um, I'm done with the queues at the clinic. So I take almost everything to the doctor. If my ear is itchy, I'm sure I would actually go and see, doctor check, is there something wrong? I'd go just to wash my teeth and all those things. I'm enjoying things that I never have had as I was growing up. So on that day, when they had to pick up the, the, the car, I had an appointment to see a doctor. I promise you it was nothing major for me to go there. So they delayed with bringing my car back. And later they called me, I think it was Cora to four to say, we are realizing that we are delaying with the car. So may we, may you allow us to please bring you a courtesy car. As soon as we are done with, with your car, we will then bring, uh, we will bring you the car. If it needs fixing, we will fix it. If it needs to be replaced, we are glad, we will be gladly uh, ready to replace and give you a new one. I actually even like that. I don't know why, cause this one was still new. As they delayed, and now it's quarter to four, I'm supposed to be knocking off at half past four. I've got an appointment with the doctor. Here is a, a girl from Zola saying, but come on guys, I've been driving with on, on the taxis for as long as I know. What is just one, one time using a taxi? And I said to them, don't worry, I'll use public transport today, but should it not be ready tomorrow morning, then please arrange to give me something. So I took the day, that, that, the day, that is the day. That very day that I chose to say to them, uh, I, I'm going to use the taxis. So I always share this when I speak about my story and also that you'll understand that I grew up very ugly and very masculine, um, extremely unattractive. Um, so now I'm working, I've got a checkbook, I'm working for a bank, I'm doing well, you know, and all those things. So guys are, are starting to appreciate me as a, a, as a woman. And that also meant well. So as I dropped off at Quasi Station, so Quasi Station, we've got a medical center on the other side. So the taxi was facing the other direction towards Ezola. And I got off at Quasi. As I got off, there was a car that was parked there, silver uh, BMW with four guys in it, decent guys, decent guys. 
And I remember they opened the window and say, hi, baby. You know, it felt good to be called baby by these decent guys. I'm like, okay, no, 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 now levers, you know? <laughs> so is, and the, can we give you a lift? I'm like, no, 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 don't worry. I mean, there is no girl that will go into a car that has got four guys. It doesn't matter how decent or how good looking they are. You can't just do that. I mean, you don't even know these people from the bar of soul. So I said, no, it's okay. I'm just coming to see the doctor. As I was crossing, I'm being honest to you. In my mind, I was saying, ah, you know what? If only one can come, maybe I will give him five minutes of my time and probably give them my numbers, whatever. So uh, I, I went I, I went inside. At the time, even the doctor, uh, Mish, a friend of mine, well, we were very close because um, I'm just this person that talks, so I managed to make friends easy. So he says to me, I, I, you, are you not driving? I said, no, I'm not. And he said, wait for me. Let me finish with all the patients that are here, then I will drop you off. And I, I said, no, no, don't worry. You finish what you're doing and you're going to delay me because I'm going to wait for you, so I'll be okay. Came out of the doctor, having done everything that I, I went there for, it was over an hour and a half or so. When I came out at the gate, this car was now parked this other side from the gate of the doctor, facing the, the direction, opposite direction. And um, they said, oh, now you're done. I'm like, yes, I'm okay. Uh, I'm, I'm done now. Okay, can we drop you now? I'm like, nope. There's no way that there's no way I can do that. I was walking away with thinking, but why is this one guy not coming to ask maybe for numbers or I speak to somebody? I mean, it's not just going to who just go there. I was actually happy, it, it, excited a, a bit. I don't know, but I was not going to go inside. I know that for sure. As I was walking towards the, the garage, just in the middle of the main road, um, that's when the language changed. I heard the opening of the window and the doors at the same time. It was like a slow motion and the language changed. Why are you begging this bitch? Well, they said it in Zulu, let's fade. I'm like, what's going on? As I tilted my head back, checking what's going on, they opened the doors, three guys came out. I was wearing corporate wardrobe at the time. I remember the buttons, they just popped out like that. I was confused. I didn't know what was happening. People were there watching and um, they, it dragged me into the car, was beaten at that point. And I did not understand what was happening, what, 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 this rage, I couldn't explain it. In fact, I would be lying to say it was painful then because I was lost in what was happening. And if they, in, inside the car, they were already hitting me and, and, and they insisted, they wanted me to perform blowjob in the, inside the car as we're going wherever we're going. And it was just so dark. I'm breastfeeding. I, I, I've got a two month um, daughter, you know, so, they took me to this place where they, they repeatedly raped me until I couldn't cry. I had no voice. I had screamed so loud that I couldn't. In fact, at that time, I couldn't even scream because what, what, what had happened is they had taken my bra and my panty. So my bra, they used to tie my hands at the back and they took my underwear, they shoved it inside my mouth. So I couldn't actually make noise because if the if the no noise is inter is 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 disturbing them, they'd hit me harder. They will punch me harder, and I didn't understand. And they went on and on. The only thing I could say was just you know just I couldn't wait to fast forward the button of what was happening. Uh, it would have been the early hours of the morning that time. I was just laying there still, even moving. I just couldn't move. It was so brutal. I don't understand what had happened, and. That was not the end. When they were done with, with because, because now I was not moving and not saying anything, they took the very same thing, my underwears, they shoved it under underneath through, you know, my, my vagina, they put it inside. You see, when, when a, a scissor comes, comes apart, they put those things and also inserted them inside. Now they wanted to know how do they clean or close this mess, you know, and um, they decided they're going to shoot me, which they did. Um, two bullets and yeah, that was it. They went to go and, and draw and dump me by Mzim between the railway line Mzim and they left me there thinking that I was done. Fast forward. Now I'm at the hospital, it's day um, four at home. I'm not coming back. I'm not reporting at work. No one knows what is happening to me. I don't know how I'm not gonna get to the things cause I don't want, I'm never gonna exaggerate this. I'm gonna say it as is. So I don't know what happened for Umam Gumede who was a principal that came with Plasasundwini. They found me there. I remember they went to go get my mom. They tell her what's happening. They said, come, we know where your child is. So my mom came and yeah. And fast forward to that. At that time, um, you, 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 we, we did not have, um, we, we, we did not have this PP that they give you after the incident. Uh, 
So they just drew, I remember they took some plus, I don't know what they were, but at that time, the only word we knew was AIDS. We didn't know HIV. We didn't know about this thing. It was foreign. In fact, people wouldn't even drink in the same cup with you when you've got uh, AIDS. People wouldn't even come close to you because we didn't know what this thing does. And um, I remember they took the bloods and as I was getting uh, better later, they came back with the results and my results were happy. Yes, I am. I, I, I'm negative. So that was exciting news. I fast forward December the 16th. That is now from the April of the incident to December. So the six months waiting period, which we would take at that time to check if your blood has not been contaminated or you didn't get infected after the incident. So the first test is to check if you are clean and uh, you know that, that's what it is. And then the, the window period is to see if you're not infected in the incident. I've not came out of hospital. I've always been there, I've stayed there. I've not moved to go anywhere. In fact, I couldn't because the one bullet was stuck and it was close to my spine, so they couldn't remove it there and then. They only removed one because the other one was threatening mobility. Guess what happened? Of, 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 when they come to me this time on the 16th, they say to me, I was from the theater. Those trips were very regular of me going in and out of the theater because they have to, to, to uh, be washing and cleaning next to this foreign object, which is not moving. So I was going to the, to the theater. I, in fact, I knew the drill very well of what happens. So they took the blood uh, before. When I came back from the theater that day, I remember they got me into my room. And, uh, and uh, so there were so many people that came. Uh, there was a psychologist, there was a clinical uh, psychologist, there was a social worker, there was a matron, there's a lady who was giving me medication and things like that, and they came, all of them, they filled this room, and I was like thinking, God, what's happening here? And as they walked, I could see that there was something that's wrong, but I did not know what it was. In my mind, I'm asking myself, what could be worse than what I've been through? What, what is it, you know? And, you know, when people are trying to be uh, uh, sensitive or loving or whatever, they are covering me even where I'm covered, they're trying to just, you know, um, and I said, okay, enough about this. Talk to me what's going on. And um, I saw the, the lady that usually would give me my injection. She just tilted her head and I could see that there were tears. And uh, the, it was a hospital social worker that delivered the news to say, remember the blast that we took? Because when they asked me to extend my hand, my, 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 it was so easy because I know it has been done and I know I'm negative. So I'm very happy. So when they asked me this time, I just extended my hand and that was it. And then this time around, the results have, your results have come back, ma'am and you've got AIDS. Um, and not only do you have AIDS, um, uh, so you, you can live up to 10 years. Now they're counseling me, listen to their words. Uh, if you take your medication well, you could live up to 10 years. And I'm here, like, up to 10 years? So I'm counting when I'm ten, when my daughter is 10 years, I'll be dead. God has hidden for, from me how, how long am I supposed to be to live or know when am I supposed to die? This time around, I know that cut off is 10 years. And I listened to these people. I looked around me, I couldn't find one person, not even one person that I could share the news with because we are here with the stigma that's there. In fact, I know how my mom would treat this the, 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 the eighth story because it was news that people were enjoying to use to gossip about would be a home and my mom will say was was come come and see inside of my of me my heart is pumping and i'm thinking if only you knew your only child has got this thing but i was not ready to tell them because i knew their toxic behavior was going to make me die before this thing so i said to myself there's no way i'm going to tell my family this is what is happening to me i kept the news to myself and i learned a lot about what is it and what does it do and things like that i refused medication and the reason I refused medication is because after that, you're going to be counseled to say, um, yes, this medication is going to help you, but uh, you should know that it comes with the side effects that it does disform you. And in fact, as a result, everyone who started taking medication at, this, at that time, they all look the same. Everyone looked the same. I, I, I don't have to, I will know that you really have this. And I said to myself, but God, why is it that I'm not only going to go through this now, even whether I take this medication or not, people will know there is something wrong with me. Why is this medication going to set me apart from anyone else, you know? And I said, no, 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 there is nothing. And there's no way that I'm going to lose my palm. In fact, I, I use that word. I'm like, come on, can I at least keep that? 
So I refused to take medication. I never took it. And um, I fast forward. I did read and realize that Dr. Umando Mbazane, um, Umando, uh, was right about the beetroot and garlic because that's what had happened. I was eating that. I would wash the beetroot and I will have it raw and put some garlic. I'm not saying don't take medication, guys. I'm just saying that it did help me for the 14 years when I was not taking medication and my family still did not know what was happening to me. Fast forward to that. Touch a bit on 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 the court trips because uh, when I was as I was recovering, I'm trying to just uh, so I'm not going to take you step by step, but I'm just going to take you to the things that are, are most important. I managed to identify to remember where were the where the guys took me. Remember, according to them, the person that they raped is dead because when when they went to dump me, they thought that I was dead. So when I recovered and I was getting better, I remember the police when they came, I knew exactly where I was taken, and I directed. In fact, I went with them to show them where in, where is the place where I was taken to rape me. Guess what? One of the guys still stayed in that house. In fact, not as in staying, but they know they know him. It's a family, family Agobo way it happened. So because I could hear their names, remember I stayed with these people for over eight hours in this one room where they so and they were communicating. These are people that have not even, you can see that they're not really uh uh people that does these things to, to be clean with their work. So as, as they are caught now, as I'm saying the names, the names that I had and things like that, it was not easy for me to prove it. In fact, it makes sense to people who are listening to me to understand that this woman is supposed to be uh, mad. She's supposed to be trying to get someone to blame because she's been through the worst of the ordeal. But in my mind, I knew I was right. Um, I remember my doctors would actually wheel me to the hospital, I mean, to the court. And why I would be wheeled there by the doctors and not my family. Remember, I don't want my family to know. And if I go with these doctors and these people will actually, they will actually understand or know my secret. So I cut them out of the incident, you know, that they don't know much about it. I'm sure those of them who are listening in, uh, some of them will be shocked of what really had happened because it's not something that I could share with them. So this one day, they wheeled me to the hospital. I remember Dr. Mzinyati, may his soul rest in peace, is no longer there. He says to me, Pindi, that time my name was Pindi Le Primrose. He says, Pindi, I want you to dress your best and I want you to look your best. But I don't want you to just look your best. I want you to go and stand in front of that mirror and say to yourself, there goes that beautiful woman again. You are the only person that will tell your story the way you should. So I want you to be strong because I'm going to be preparing you uh, for the court. And um, as we're going to, uh, to the court that day, I, I'm, I'm on the wheelchair being wheeled by the doctors. Next to me, there are ladies that are passing through. This lady stopped next to the, to the, to the wheelchair and she spat next to my to, to the wheelchair and say sis you think my men will fall for something like you can you see how you look did you, did you see yourself do you know how you look if you think my men will fall for something like you in my mind i was saying my problems are are bigger than me answering. They willed me in. There's a guy at work from the employee well-being. His name is Johan. He's a white guy. He's blind. He could speak all the languages. But those are the people that would actually, uh, you know, that traveled the journey with me. Most of them are normal. So that this, they obviously no one going to say I've done it. They say no, we, we didn't. No, that never happened. There's no way that we would rape this girl or whatever. Guess what? I think it was made in to be very uh, for me. For me to, to 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 make sense out of this, because none of these guys had a criminal record. Can I humor you and let you know? One guy was working for Standard Bank. One guy was working for a, a AFSA. The other one was working for SARS. The other one, these are guys who have never committed. There's nothing. So for me to be telling them that a, a lady who has been um, unconscious for this long will come and blame these people. So it didn't work, make sense for me to say that. But this day after the doctor has told me that, I was ready to tell, oh, to let my story be heard from my mouth than just from you know everyone else. And I'm ready, I'm saying, I'm going to go there and I will tell them what had happened. I don't care who believes me. In fact, this time, I don't want people who are going to be um, supporting or believing me. I'm going to tell my story. That's all I wanted to do. This one day, this guy, as they come out uh, up from from you know from where they keep them you know if you're accused you don't use this the same door the four the four of them they come they stand there and i'm sitting like behind and it's not his turn to speak so um he's interrupting so much that the that that's that's um the U U U judge is 
is irritated and say, okay, what, what was happening with your client? Asking the, 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 the lawyer. And, and it's like, okay, what do you want to say? Do you have something to say? He says it loud and says, yes, I have. Don't waste my time. Speak what you want to say. He looks at me. He looks at his friends and he looks down. He looks up again, check, he looks at me. And I remember as if it were yesterday, this guy, he just had his head face down like this and tears were, 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 were like, I, they were not just, they were dripping down. And he says, I don't know about the others, but as for me, I know that I've done it because I'm not going to cause this woman more pain than I have. And that was it. I didn't have to tell my story because it became a state witness. So we know what's happened. Fast forward, the guys are now caught. We know that it's done. So we are done. Now, 14 years later, 14 years later, at home, they still don't know. Remember that I've got, uh, I've got AIDS. Remember at the time, it's, it's when the times are going that you know it's not AIDS now. It's HIV. When does it become whatever? But that was the name that we always knew. I, I went to the doctor. So everything that was happening to me, I will make sure I go and check, is there something that's happening? And I went to see this dermatologist, Dr. Mpofu, beautiful, uh, powerful woman also of God. And I went to her scared because I was, I think I was having something like chicken pox. I'm like, is it because of, of what is on in my body? Just like this, yes, what do you think? You know, I'm like, goodness gracious, can she be nice? And she says, there's no way I'm gonna treat you as a CC. This is what it is. You're already starting to get sick. It's been this long. So yeah, this is what's happening. Do you want me to pray for you? And I said, no, thanks, don't pray for me. I went home as I'm thinking, now I'm really going to start dying. What's going to happen with me? Uh, but she gave me treatment and I was okay. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I should maybe start taking the treatment because I'm hearing that the treatment has been made better. The, some of the side effects that don't work. I, I continued. I think after month number eight, I had a pimple. This one uh, pimple was just, just, just close to my navel. So I went to see another doctor and I said, I've got something that is bothering me, it's painful. And the doctor just looked at me and said, no, don't worry, it's nothing. Um, you're gonna be okay, he gave me an injection. And when I went home, Jesus Christ, the following day, the very next, the very next day, these pimples, this, they were so small, so many. Okay, I think in, in my whole journey, it's that is one pain I will never forget. It was so many of the small pimples that were going around coming to my back. They were shingles. God, they, they were painful. So I drove myself to my Batin hospital to go and see the doctor that was like treating me. And then I'm like, okay, uh, I've got this. Oh, in fact, the doctor was not there because it was late. They called her to come in. And she said to me, it's shingles. They bad, they take time to heal, but you're gonna be okay. I'm gonna give you some IV treatment and you'll be okay. But I think after this, uh, Pindi, you need to consider taking medication now because your system is now failing. I didn't even know anything about what is the CD4 count. I didn't know anything about the viral load and that. And it told me that your CD4 count has dropped to below 20. And uh, so maybe you should consider it. The way I was feeling and the way it was so traumatic, those pains, the way I, I couldn't sleep, no, nothing that they gave me, which they said was for pains would help me. I'm like, when I get back, when I get better here, I'm gonna go and, and find out about this treatment. Fast forward, I did that. And I went to the, the uh, public hospital to go and get the, the tablets. So they didn't tell me what the side effects were. And I got the tablets and after I got them, I started taking one and remember they still don't know at home I'm sick. So I have to hide the treatment. So they gave me the, I, I, take, I, take, I took the one, I never slept the day. The nightmares, the, you know, the, my body, things that were happening was just, so my nights became very bad until I got to a point of saying, no way I can't. So I was experiencing the dreams that were continuing. So whatever that was happening yesterday, when I sleep today, it's going to happen. And I said, no, there's something wrong with this nonsense. I drove to the doctor and I said, okay, tell me about this medication. What have you given to me? Why am I getting that? Before I could finish the doctor, oh, you're also getting nightmares. I'm like, ah, oh, so you know, why didn't you tell me that this is what's going to happen? No, don't worry about that. It's initiation. I'm like, initiation? That word alone was enough to trigger. And I said, not going to take this nonsense. I stopped the medication. That's the worst thing I could have ever done in my life. Because now I have introduced the drug into my system. What the drug does, we know what it does. It will suppress the, 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 the virus and it stays 24 hours in your body. But what it also does, it aggravates and makes it angrier. That's the reason why you cannot come out of it. Because if you come out of it, then uh, the, the virus will be active after 24 hours. Remember, it only stays 24 hours in your body. So when it's active, it's now angrier. 
Now I pull out of the medication. God be God. I stopped living immediately from that time and I started dying. I'm not exaggerating when I say that. I went to the to a mill park. I changed the hospital. I thought if they were not working, I went to Garden City. I went to LendMed because I wanted to get it. It never helped until my medical aid was exhausted. Uh, admitted in hospital. That time, everything in my system, everything, in fact, my system was like failing. There's no place that was not painful from my scalp to my fingers and everything else. I got so sick, stayed in hospital for so long that my they came to tell me that, unfortunately, ma'am, we're going to have to move you from here because your medical aid has been is exhausted. So, but don't worry, we have arranged with Helen Joseph, so we're going to take you there. Now, the switch from a place where they ask you, are you, are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. Please try and eat to a place. Say, hey, hey, not? don't think we are here for you. Wake up. You know, so I got to that hospital and it got even worse. That's where the tragedy <laughs> multiplied. And um, now I was sick. I now really was full blown with AIDS. I had almost everything that you can you can check. I I um I had shingles, as I said. The introduction was so bad. The TB I had TB in my stomach. Uh, my weight loss was so drastic. In fact, to a point that the very same bums I wanted to keep were gone. I had no breast. I couldn't even put a bra. I was literally could fit. In fact, I could literally fit in my daughter's clothes. That is when I recovered. But the whole time I was in hospital, you would inject me with the with the with, with uh, whatever medication that you give me and I would have diarrhea, I couldn't eat, I couldn't do anything. In fact, I, I didn't even had, um, have power to sit up or whatever. The only position I had, and I stayed in that position without exaggerating for three full years when I couldn't sit up, literally. If, you, if I, I couldn't even tell myself. And here I've got this bad diarrhea, everything is going wrong. I have got all, all the things that you can think of. Um, I, I think I've noted them there. Uh, the, I had the, then they will do something like the bone marrow was done without anesthetic. It's public hospital now. They would do your lumbar puncture without anesthetic. Everything would be done. The pains were just so much. In fact, I got to a point where saying hello to you would take so much of my energy. I had my Bible, but the only thing I could do with my Bible was just to take it and press my stomach where, because the, the biggest pain I had was in my stomach. But it's because I did not know that the TB, because every time they check for TB, it was negative until they realized that it, it was in the stomach. So um, they, that's when then I didn't have to ask. They, in, they introduced TB treatment. On its own, it was very harsh for my body. Remember now I'm like this bones. I, that's when I learned that it's not a figure of speech to say, your, your, your skin is attached to bones. In fact, but it's kumbas, it's not a figure of speech. It literally does. There was no flesh, literally no flesh. When, when I tried to turn like this, I could feel that it's like I'm ungluing something that is attached to my bones. I've got like literally nothing. The nurses, uh, this one day, Dr. Spencer, he's still alive. Uh, he, he works for right to care. He came, he's a consultant. He came to the hospital and he just walked in. I remember his weight. Um, he says, how long has this woman been like this? And the, the registrar uh, says, putting together with the time in the public, in the private hospital to being here, we're talking about 18 months or so. And he says, if I come back on Monday and this woman is still like this, we are pulling the plug. I can hear, but I can't speak, right? So I, he comes back on Monday. When he comes back on Monday, he has a tablet on. He's got a piece of paper. And I, I had covered myself because it was cold. I remember somebody banging things on top of me. But it was the doctor dropping the things that he's got. He takes a chair and he sits. I think he was busy with his phone. After a few minutes, he gets irritated to be sitting here and there is no one. And he, 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 this is exactly how he said it. Sister. How long am I going to bloody wait for the bloody patient? I'm not yet, where is the patient? And the sister came shaking and she said, but doctor, the patient is here. When he opened the blankets to see that there was a human being, he didn't touch me. He said, this is it. Call the family, we are pulling the plug. Called my family and he said to you, them, no more time for visiting hours. You will see her for as long as you want to see her. There's nothing you can do, you can see. She has, can't eat, can't take medication. She cannot stand up, she cannot. So this is it, so go and discuss. That's where things happened, where my daughter overheard my family who was being real with my life, sitting there and discussing, you know? And I remember how my daughter 
uh, got to be so rebellious, hating everyone as to how do you give up on my mom like this? Why are you doing this? In fact, I'm not angry with my family for them doing that because I know for a fact that it felt like death. It looked like death. And I know it was death, but then it was confirmed to be it. In my mind, I knew I was not going to die because I didn't want to die. I didn't, but I don't know how was I going to live because there's nothing that was painful. When they say they're pulling the plug, what they are doing, they're pumping me with morphine. And now what morphine does, it suppresses your respiratory system. You know, uh, you, that's why you cannot take it uh, continuously. But you know, for those pa cancer patients and all those people, you would, you would get to be given because there's nothing else they can do. They just want to make you comfortable until you die. So they were giving me 90 milligram of morphine four times a day. Mm. the sister comes when she comes she she has got the I, i'm sure we know how we treat morphine, morphine is not like any other one it must be signed for there must be a, a, a senior sister that's going to uh, confirm that it has been dispatched when they give it to you it must be used because no one should be seen with it just like that so that's the the protocol that comes with it so this nurse came this time around i don't know she probably just spiritually connected with me she says to me why are you not fighting in my mind, I'm thinking, what is fighting? What is it that I'm not doing that you expect of me to do? She says to me, please stop taking this thing because there is only one door for you. It's going straight to your grave. And I'm like, what should I do? I'm trying to speak, I can't speak. And uh, I'm trying to write to explain to her, to, to, let, to find out what is it that she wants me to do. She says, I, I can't advocate, I can't do it for you. But as the doctor to not give you in, in an injection form, tell her your body so I mean everyone can see. And the doctor came, and I'm like, doctor, is it possible to have <clears throat> to have the tablet instead of the injections? But you can't give you tablets. You, you don't eat. You you can't put anything. I mean, you can't even hold water in your system. How are we going to give you tablets? I promise you, I'm going to try. I promise you, I will start. I, I, I'll eat. So what I would do each time they give me my morphine, I will lift. I will lift my mattress and, and put all the, the tablets there. Now, what the morphine does um, for us who always talk about drugs, not understanding whether the people on drugs going, it takes you to, I don't know how heaven is. I'm sure it, it takes you there because you can literally feel from your head going down, the pains being suppressed and you're getting this peace, this relief, you know, until you get your no, next dose. But now I'm pulling out of the medication because I've been told it's taking me to death and there is no other treatment. They can't treat me because it's not, they can't, there's nothing they can do. And uh, from the same heaven that I was getting off morphine to the hell of the pains back and I could feel all of them in my body. I remember when Dr. Spencer came back and I was not as dead as they thought. And he said, this is it, let her go and die at home. I was distracted to go and die at home because it was not doing what they're expecting. They never understood. And um, as I, 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 I I think as a result of that, um, I, I, I tried to make it uh, so, so, as a result of that, then I have 14 laparotomies. Now we know what laparotomies are. I remember on the last meeting that we had in this platform, uh, Ubaba Umandazi asked for that we pray and you did, you prayed for me, thank you so much. Um, I was going to go for the 15th laparotomy. Now laparotomy is this operation where they open from one end to another, you know. And the intention of that was for them so that they could remove my womb. Um, because they picked up that they are abnormal cells. Now, things that are not really told by medical people, the side effects of the IRVs when you take them. Um, I know I might sound uh, negligent to say this, but I am for a, a person who believes that these things have got something because they will have the side effects. A number of women or female uh, people that are taking the medication do suffer from womb, womb whatever. It's, and they actually, the, the, the hospital will tell you about that, that they you know want to start getting those issues, you know. So that's what I was supposed to go for, which was cancelled, but I, I'm moving away from that. Um, uh, and the, uh, what shocks a lot of people was um, when I got better, and because when I got home, I couldn't uh, bath myself. I remember my friends would come home and they would offer to change because you cannot be a mother and you have this daughter who's 37 years old. Now you must bath her. My mom had to literally unpack If she does, she doesn't make my bed is not made. If she cannot bath me because she's tired, she is not going to be able to do it. If there is no one to help her lift me to the bathroom and get me inside the water, which is so much of an effort to actually give me a bath because I'm so tired in no time. And um, 
I remember my dad would stand by the gate and say, eh, and, and ask about mama who don't even know us, you know, and say, Can you get a man? In fact, the, what the society did um, what, what was, was very shocking that um, they, they knew they were actually saying, Nilumi Simpatazi and Sim Mabi 1256. Just get ready because we are going to have a funeral at 12:56, and they were meaning that 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 is home. So, um, if, and, and they would warn people as I was recovering. I remember people were saying, "Unga mshele, unga nyikboni le na na le andomba zanila." We have got to the eight. Well, I think that's still how they treat me even now. Yeah, but that's, those are the things that were happening. But um, I'm I'm standing, guys. But I think uh, when I got better. I, um, it was not easy, that much I can tell you. When I got better, the one thing I wanted to do was to go to all this prison because they, they split them to go and see the guys. The guys did die in prison from AIDS, so they did have it. I, the doctors believe it's those people who believe that if you sleep with someone else, when you've got AIDS, you're going to free yourself from it. They did. The guy that confessed for some odd reason is the only one that is still in, uh, is still alive. And in fact, when I went to visit them, I wanted to tell them that they did not do anything to me. All the, what they did was to activate a plan of God to make me understand that um, they don't have the control they think they have. And, and people were shocked as to why. In fact, before they did, they would call me boldly and ask me to buy them a time I said, you know, and I would buy them. If they need toiletries, I would do it because I wanted to free them and tell them that, guys, I think the worst prison is the one that you are in of knowing that you have done this to me, but the one that I've got of letting you see, good, I'm alive. I didn't die and I'm still standing. And I'm here to free you to tell you, I'm not mad at you anymore. It didn't happen instantly. And uh, uh, so the things that helped me cope, um, yeah, I think I tried. The things that, that helped me cope, um, I, oh, it was my understanding because I got to understand that um, I might be wrong, you could see, a, anointing has a way of attracting. I I call myself anointed. Um, doesn't mean that I, I will open a church, uh, Sipo. <laughs> you know, I believe that uh, I do have an anoint, anointing. But I know the one thing that anointing does it attracts. Now, anointing doesn't only attract; it attracts both the good, the good and the bad. And usually, people who would be doing things like this to you, the intention is for them being attracted to what what they see or what they need inside of them, which they cannot feed from because they think it's physical when it's not. Um, and I know this for a fact because I know how how when, when you're around people, they will treat you, especially being an old woman of my age. I'm 43 years, never married, and I'd be working as I'm doing. In fact, I was even called a church hop. I can see um, my friends are here. I can see their comments, but I'm saying, they, would, and they wouldn't understand as to, I was called a church hopper because everywhere I go, I'm just a person who's very active and I want to work. So you'll find me having to work with leadership and making Abu Mamufun these guys uncomfortable, you know, because they think there's like something there. So I'd leave the church and like, I'm not here for this admin. I go somewhere I serve before I know it, I'm given a position to try and do something. When I start doing that, it's always going to be that, you know, until I go where I am. So I know that the people that will, because, and then I will, the other reason why I know that it's that when, I, re I realized and remembered that when all these had happened to me, God was watching. It made me believe. Because it, there's two things that were supposed to happen at that point to think there's really no God. I remember my daughter saying, to, when when because my daughter started, um, she she went on drugs. She was smoking ganja after after she she was rebellious because she was angry that my family was arranging my funeral. My daughter started insulting them at home. She told them, in fact, she was very rude and unruly. Didn't understand. In fact, I don't know how the child passed me a trip. She would tell them how wicked they are to a point that she was literally chased from home. And um, uh, because Begaum don't lie. What hurts me about that part of the story was that in everyone I have in my family, not one person could have taken my child in. And I believe that God probably just wanted to save me for, for this child who didn't have a, my uncle or people that I love. And not that I'm judging them, guys, don't hear me wrong, but sometimes God does things, his plan. I, maybe they probably didn't think because this woman was from church who took her in to stay with her. As a result, I'm a gogo -go now because my daughter got to meet this guy who is Rastafarian and made them because she said, if this is what your God does, 
to a person who has loved you and saved you the way my mom loves God. I don't want your God. She started cutting on herself. Even today, if you can see her, she's got the cuts on her body as she was cut because she was cutting and things like that. And, you know, well, I'm, I'm glad that she's back to God now because I, I came back. Also, the other thing is that uh, the one thing that unlocks the level where Upindile, uh, which is the name that I was I was given at birth, and I changed after my 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 my, my, my this ordeal, is that um, it, it removed everything that I was going to, to for me to be speaking to you and standing now and having the 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 miracle that I'm living. I'm living a miracle of of the mirror. People who knows me will tell you I've got more pictures than. And in fact, there is no day. Uh, maybe now I can pass a day, but every day I take a picture. You know why I take a picture? I take a picture of me being shocked at the person I saw when I couldn't stop to realize that when God brought it back and I've got my my breast, I've got my palms back and everything. God didn't make an error of putting a hip on the leg or whatever. Everything went back to perfect shape. That without an operation this time around. And that's why I always look at myself at the mirror and I say, but God, you truly leave. When people were laughing at me, calling me a shattered queen who had had everything and now have lost everything because I could not work. I've been a consultant. If I don't make money, I don't have money. If I don't submit business, I don't have money. And people are coming to me and laughing about me not having a car in my mind. I'm saying, do you know what it means to even stand? You are laughing at me not having a car, but just to stand and be in the taxi to me is the largest, is the greatest testimony that you can ever have. And the other realization that helped me was that I know without a shadow of, of, of doubt that I am a spirit. I have a body which I live in and I have a soul. What these guys did Yes, it has. It, 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 I'm, I'm a scarred body woman with all the operations and all the opening and all those things that are happening. But the person I really am is not touched. No one has access to it and no one could ever do anything. They might yes. have done it. I live with it every day but today i know that the person that i was because for the rape to happen it needed to find me alive for, so if it goes it can't leave me dead i'm not going to stop living because of it it came and it left i remember going to um uh, the time i went to Devon to speak to the medication and say i don't know who you are but i know they say you kill all i'm going to tell you is that when i live here you would have do you will do what you do whilst I'm continuing to live. I'm not going to stop living because of what you are. All I know is that you don't have access in my body. I don't want to accept you, and this is what it is. You know, so my understanding that has helped me cope because there's no way it's easy for you to cope knowing exactly what is happening. It's a daily exercise, guys. There is a time where you wake up and say, "Wake up, Pindi." You know, I changed my name after that to Musa. The reason why I'm Musa, it is because it's grace that I'm alive and I'm clear about that. And the reason why I gave my other, myself another name that is blessing, it is because I want to be a blessing to other people who are not. But there is no day till today where I wake up sober and just go and jump out of the bed. I'm a very happy person in general, uh, you know, like when people who know me and I'm bubbly. And when I'm laughing, I'm really genuine about it. But there's days when you wake up and you cannot do it. These days, there's things that will remind you where you've been. Unless you realize that those things didn't happen to who you are, but to what you have, then you are, you are able to separate the two because you know and say, okay, yes, this has been done to my body, but the real me is still alive. That is another thing that helped me cope. And then accepting that to me, uh, that I will never be seen whole, uh, the other things that you leave that I have to accept that uh, I'm never going to be seen whole. There are people here who will come and say, this is a beautiful woman, and they will approach me. Uh, now I can be called beautiful. Guys, please, you need to clap for me for that. I've been ugly now, you know. But when they come close to you, then they realize that you've got this. So there's two things. It's either you lie about your status so that you can be accepted, or you're going to, when you say and tell them the truth of what you are, you stand at risk of losing them. And I had to make peace with that, that there are people who will never accept me because of my journey. There are people who will never understand or, or, or see me whole and I made peace with that that it's okay if you don't but I'm not going to continue to live a life so I can be accepted by a person who think they have what they don't have because in me they have a bruised woman a raped woman a, a woman that's dealing with the wounds if you cannot accept it it's okay and that also has helped me cope because it, it's it's painful to, re, to be rejected by people who you know that they actually love you or they really do but not enough to handle the admin because it is admin 
It is at me. And we need to understand and allow them to be when people cannot, you, I can't be bitter at those guys that I appreciated and I loved and I wish they stayed, but they went because I told them my truth. But I will tell my truth nonetheless. And, and that's that. So that has also helped me. That there will be people who will love me but are not ready to handle the admin, as I said. And also, it's an error for me to allow my life to end because of my unfortunate uh, incident. So I, I am leaving. And then the other thing that I prepare for you is that, um, okay, I told you that I was alive before and I still am. And uh, it happened and left a never ending scar, but it's a scar I appreciate. I'll tell you why I appreciate the scar because I'm not gonna get into the story. Why I appreciate my scar, I only learned now on the 12th of March this year that God was intentional when it happened 24 years back that my daughter, the only child I have was uh, hijacked when she was with her boyfriend at the gate at home. They shot the, the boy, he, they shot two bullets. He died at the gate at home. They took my daughter to go and rape her by the railway station. It was also four guys. And that's what I'm dealing with. My daughter is going through a lot. I'm not gonna tell her story. It's not for me to do that. I'm sharing because I'm saying that when she looks at me and say, but my mom still have a pure smile, but my mom still can heal people. I, I see now why, my, why God kept me then for her today because what she's been through, no one could actually handle it. I remember how I was sitting with her, not understanding, not knowing that the guy she was with was shot dead at the gate of home, at home. And I have to stand for her and say, I know when, when I say to her, I know my baby could take a hamburger in hand. She believes me because she knows what I've been through. And that helps her stand because I don't think Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's, it's standing. She's she's trying. She's struggling. It's not easy. Um, I've been. I've worked at the radio where people know who I am. So when it happened, they said, "Umdanaga Iron Lady has been done this." So people have been talking about it, even making lies that she had to leave home and go and stay at the rest because she doesn't want to be posted by, I mean, pay, pay, pointed at by everyone. And that She's not having it easy, it's still very fresh, but to relieve my pain on my daughter, yeah. it would have been worse than yeah. what it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So as I wrap, uh, as I wrap, um, my pain, my trauma, my scars are not life. They are not life. They are just proof that the enemy does come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I also know that that in the very same verse, it was counteracted when Jesus said, I have come so that you might have life and have it in abundance. I've learned also, I think one thing that I want to leave you with, guys, that there are three main things that happens to a person that has been raped. Um, not everyone ha it happens to, but if you get to see it because of the work that I do now, I, I do a lot of, of, of work where I help people who, have been, who are struggling with dealing with their rape, with dealing with their, with their status when they get it. So they openly come to me and speak to me and I, I help them. So that's what I do. Um, that's my main thing that I also do. I also know that a number of girls that tend to become lesbian um, in the percentage of the ones that I've met, 90% of them is because they've been raped because you don't want to see a man who's going to see you naked unless you can really, really, really trust them, you know? And then also it's either, the second thing is that you prostitute yourself before you judge those people that are thinking that something that's right because we are holy here. Let's understand that there's reality in that. When you have held your pride being raised by Ugogo who tells you that a woman doesn't just do this and this and somebody comes and takes that from you and you've got this thing because I know with also rape is not about sex, sexuality it's not about being horny it's not about you no 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 it's about power so people it, it's because people want to exercise this power that they think they have over you to show you now you want to claim your power back and what you do when people prostitute themselves they say it's never going to be something you can hurt me about 
You can't help me with that. So because of that, then have fun with it. In fact, I can make money if I want to, because those are the other things. That's another thing that happens. But also, you, you also choose. So, so those are all the bad things. You also choose to be okay with not being loved. It's okay to be lonely. It's okay to be uh, to not have anyone accept you because you've been there. And those are the things that you have to choose because what else can you do? There will always be something that makes you remember. They will always. To every one of you, I know some of my friends who are here are people who have actually experienced it and they ask me, but how do you do it and things like that. I'm not going to come sit here and lie to you and say you're going to forget. In fact, I don't want you to forget. I want you to be okay. And there will always be something that will remind you. There will be a car that looks like that one. There will be a guy that's me because you even know the smell. There will be somebody that smells like them. There will always be something <coughs> that will remind you of that. So. You need to find a mechanism to jump out uh, and then, but mine is this one of knowing that it's not me that has been harmed. So yours, I don't know what it will be, but you need to take that and have that thing. That you, so accept that you will always remember. You wake up every day, as I said, you win sometimes, sometimes you don't. And when you're not feeling okay, it's okay to not feel okay. You're not weak, it's all right. Um, and then also, uh, I need to ask everyone who is here. Guys, please, pretty please, I humbly request. We are not rape victims. I am not a victim, I am a victor. When you say to me, I am a victim, you make me think that the next guy that comes that I'm going to meet, or if I happen to be late somewhere because I'm a victim, people are going to identify, that's how it sounds to me. So never call as a victim. Maybe I was a victim when they caught me that date ended on the very day. What you have here is a victim. When you invite me, don't, uh, don't call me a, a rape victim. I'm not a rape victim. Please don't call us victims. We are not. And the one thing also that I will ask for you. In fact, I've, 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 I've grown to dislike the word, be strong. Please don't ask me to be strong. Yeah. Do not ask me to be strong. For starters, the word tells me how weak you perceive me by breaking and showing you what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. When you ask me to be strong, you are letting me know how weak you perceive me to be because I'm breaking in front of you because I'm not strong. That's why you're going to say be strong. Shift away from that word, far away from it, from a person who's going that. Make sure you don't use it. I am strong. I know I am. It's just that at the present moment, I don't know where my strength is because there is pain that is overwhelming and allow me to feel it. It has nothing to be strong. I don't want to be strong also. Allow me to break when I'm, I'm, I, I'm, when I'm not feeling like it. I don't want to be strong because I'm going to act it out. If I was strong, the strong that you're asking me, I would have beat those guys to death, four of them, so that they don't even touch me. So this is not a strength mentor because it takes us back to the power. I am not weak. So don't say that. When having done all to stand, um, I will ask you to stand again. Your body is humiliated, yes, but who you really are will never be touched by anyone. You are more than a conqueror. It's not to destroy you. I know that. What you went through, you're going through, it's not to destroy you. What the enemy meant for evil, our God has meant it for good. Can we stop majoring with minors? Can we stop majoring with minors? Don't take away my being a woman because of what I've been through. Because once you understand what is my situation, then you will understand which I don't want to be grouped and say those who are sick, those with age, those, no, no, no. Don't group me. I'm a human being. That is just so okay. I understand that. Um, I think that will be it for today. One thing I would want to say, none of us are white at all a big, a whatever, all those things you see that you can describe me with have nothing to do with who I really am. Guys, that is all I've prepared for you. I tried to keep to my time and I think I did very well. I'm greatly humbled. Thank you so much. Over to you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Aus, Aus Mosa. And I would like everybody to to un unmute themselves. Uh, oh, uh, like start their videos. And clap. That's what I'm asking from you. Just unmute yourself and clap from Sismos. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Amen. We took a lot. We had a lot. We learned a lot. For one reason that I always say, Jorge, my daughter, it comes back to us. The scars that she's carrying are from us men. The scars that she walks with every day were caused by us men. Because of a simple thing, we don't want to talk, we don't want to deal with our issues. We only want to have power over things that you're not supposed to have. And I want to say thank you very much again, Gwe Sisbusi, for the strength that you have. There's something that you said, Jorge. I am a... I'm going to read it. Somebody's phone is on. Please switch off your phone. There's something that you said, Jorge. I'm a spirit. I'm not touched. And you are a spirit. Mm. You are not touched because you have a purpose that you live in by. Yes. And I always say that powerful women are always the ones that the world needs. Yes. Women that can encourage others from their story to go out and heal themselves as they are healing. And I love the fact that you said, I'm not going to be strong. And please, gentlemen and ladies on this call, anybody that's going through trauma, let's stop, you'll be strong. Strong for who? Strong for what? Let the person break. Let the person deal with their pain so that they can heal at their own pace. Let's stop be strong because the be strong of us, that's why we've got people that are sitting body clinicking because they try to be strong because of what society has always wanted to be. I'm, I'm gonna end here and ask for the audience to send any question. I wanna check if in the inbox there's any question. One thing that I see, Sismosa, that is here, that everybody is saying, it's wow, that's the last one. The other one says, he is the redeemer. Mudimu Uteng. Mudimu Orobon Sid. Kawe. And I would like anybody who's got a question now to, to unmute themselves, introduce themselves or Kemang, and ask the question to Sismo. So we only have about 40 minutes before we close the session. I see Chair has got your, uh, your hand up. Uh, you can go ahead, sir. Yo, leadership, I don't know why I have my hand up. I don't know where to start. I don't know what to say. I, I know that I was supposed to meet this beautiful lady last week, so wait, and I, I unfortunately missed that. And I really have to see her. She says, I owe you a big hug, a very tight hug. You are, you are a hero I've never came across before and you live to tell your story. And I, I'm, maybe I didn't raise my hand to talk about your ordeal. And I want to, I want everyone from what you have said, you have powerfully uh, 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 demonstrated that uh, uh, we, all, we all have our ordeal in this world. And sometimes our ordeal move from us and to our children or to the most vulnerable of the vulnerable. So what I want to say here, I want to pass a message that everyone who's here must take with home. We all have our ordeal. Uh, uh, we live in the world that uh, has turned us into victims of circumstances. I, 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 I can't stop imagining what Sismosa went through and for her not to turn his back, her back against God and for her to turn her ordeal into the victory that she has, she, she, she has worked with. What was supposed to kill her? It's, it's now staring her in the eyes and it's what has made her strong. And it is very, very painful. I'm saying to everyone out there, Let's turn our ordeal into our victories. And let's always make it fashionable to evaluate our, our behaviors, our actions. Because it is this that for the last 24 years, she's living with and no one will take her that away from her. She lives with it every time she, she it is in her. And it is this very same us people who go and judge people like that. She stood strong. 
and we need many of her. We need many, many, many of Sis Musas, the Iron Lady. We, we, we need each other. And I'm glad that our party has met Sis Musa. You are such a remarkable hero. To me, you are a hero in my life. You are an incredible hero. And can this relationship with Saljak not end here? You've got so much to go. You've got so far to go. And if I may just steal a few more minutes, leadership Majogan, when this club was founded, the purpose was that very same one, that guys, we are leaders. No ill should happen in our communities and societies when we are there. And if you listen to Istori Sagasis Musa, she got out of the doctor's surgery rooms. She walked and people were there when she was grabbed. It wasn't in the middle of the night somewhere. She was wearing a mini skirt in the bush somewhere, whatever. People were there watching, but she disappeared for days on end. No single person took a phone and called and take the number plate of a car or whatever. I might not know that, but I'm saying these ills that are happening, they happen in our presence. We are watching and, and we have that attitude that if it doesn't happen to me, let me not stick my nose into it. Like hell, I will stick my nose. If it means that will be the last time I live, I will stick my nose. And I need leaders like that who will work with me. Because the world, as is because everyone is minding their own business. We are absolutely right when you say they didn't touch your soul and your spirit. And you are not a victim. You are the spirit that has had an experience with the evilness that is out there in the world. And that has never changed who you are. And we as Saljak, we are so happy we have you. I don't know what to say. Thank you very much, Yashif. Uh, one thing that I would like to say, as society, we have become bystanders of pain and misery. When somebody is going through a lot, we are happy to watch them instead of us helping them. And is there any question, any hand? I see Mama Kosaza and I'm going to like the video. You want to say something, ma'am? Sis Musa Utsusitabatu. Nobody's got strength to ask any question. And I would like somebody to come and ask. You know, one thing that I always say, Hore, there's a way that you dislike, which is strength and strength. But what I want to find out in everything, in everything that has happened, there's one thing that should have given you or gives you strength. I know your daughter is one. A uh, Reverend Muloi, you can have, you can ask your question, say, unmute yourself, introduce yourself and ask a question. Dr. Muloi. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, it is not Reverend Muloi. He invited me when he heard that Ausmosa was coming to talk today. Oh, okay. So I'm eavesdropping a little bit. <laughs> Ausmosa, thank you so much for your story. Um, the moderator was correct in saying, get your tissues. Um, a painful story indeed. I'm very sad to hear even about your daughter. Um, I think that shatters my heart. Um, the question I want to ask you is how do you find strength to be there for your daughter working? Like, like when you say you know very well, how do you find the means and the strength to help your daughter and to to be there for her, how do you counsel her? How do you pro propel her through to be at the place where you are today? Okay, your question is that, okay. Thank you so much for, for that. I didn't get your name, sorry. But uh, I think the one thing that I did not also, uh, that I left out, which is going to address the question is that, unlike a, a toothache, um, the rape does not need a dentist who, who doesn't have a, it needs a person um, because also the other state I learned was that majority of people who, who have been raped, that they count, but they do not finish because you are sitting there with somebody who is telling you what they've learned and what they, usually they just want you to tell us, tell us what is going on. They want you to somebody who 
has went the journey. It is easy for her. It has been the very close person ever to it. So the one thing also made easy is that I'm not afraid to cry in front of her understanding is going. There's some times where she doesn't want to. In fact, my daughter, like me, I'm an extra of this voice and when she cries, till today, from the day in March, I've never had a crowd out like, ah, you know, just see tears just coming out and like that. There's times where she wants to be out. Sometimes she doesn't want to be out. Uh, she, she would just listen to her. But then usually it's not even weights because there's no way you can just put it weights to make a person see exactly what it was. You know, but it has been easy uh, for me to do it because I know I want it. I give her exactly. It's just like love. I think that's what it does because I'm giving her what I would have for to know, to treat me, to say to me. And, and, and I think it's working. It's pretty soon to have to be okay. It's, it's, it's just typical. And, um, we're doing great together. We have chicken laughters with her. So, yeah. So that's how I deal with it the way I, I, would, I was expecting. Um, with me, my mom was not there, not that she was not present, but remember even Kate, I didn't have that relationship. Fortunately, my, my, my daughter has me as a friend. In fact, if she has friends, it would be the first time I hear about them. We are so close, Valencia. So this has been stronger. Um, she wants to be literally, this is a person who has got a child, but she wants to, to sit on me and I hug her like that. And I don't mind because I know what it means. When I was coming, I remember this place, I had to, I'm a little bit of a prison, I didn't know how to do it, didn't know how to do it. But when my daughter needs it, know what she wants. She wants, you know, so it has really been easy. Thank to you so much. To handle, not to handle the, the situation for her, you know, to, to let her come for her. I, I hope I've answered the question. Thank you, thank you. I, I just want to say quickly, Chen, through you, Chen, I, I really just want to reiterate, thank you so much, because you, in your, most of the time we hear rape stories and they end at rape. But I'm, I'm thankful that even for me, you open my eyes to the sequelae because it's a life-changing moment. It's a sequelae, but I'm, I'm thankful to God for you. I'm thankful to God for your for your testimony that even though the sequela was literally a death, but God is able to bring us back to life. Um, I, I really don't have words. Be encouraged, women of God. You are doing a good job. You are a light that we see through and we thank God for you, for your testimony, for your love, and for your strength, Ausmosa, for all your emotions. You are allowed to feel your feels. You are allowed to say your truth. To God be the glory. Thank you so very much, Ma. I appreciate it. God bless you. Thank you very much uh, to Mama. Uh, there's a question here that says from Dr. Knowledge, what secret have motivated you to be able to let go of the pain? How did you let go of the pain and what motivated you to let go of the pain? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, for the, I think it's the very same thing that I, I say, what, what helped me was understanding. Uguti, it's not me. Umu saba means an ex. <laughs> you know, there's me as I'll be lying because there was nothing that was making it better. There was there was nothing. It's me, it's me separating it from myself, and it helped me to understand utrinity and and exercise. It. In fact, it pushed me to. It forced me to understand what is it, what what is me being a spirit. Because I'd be lying to say. I don't have any of the gifts of, I might not have a, a stomach that is not cut now or whatever, the things that I lost or that you can see physically, but everything spiritual that I had then, I can, I can still pray, I can still sing, I can still love, I can still do all those. It is me separating that from me. The, that, then the components that makes me a human being, a great one that really makes me me is the one that one can access. No one has a right to it. No one can, 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 can do it. That's the only thing that, that happened. It's one it's amongst the things that happened. I think I did a number of those things. Accepting things, things that you had to accept. What had the other thing that hurts you the more is know that oh, now I'm not good enough because I've got it. How did I get it? Because I was raped. Why I was it? You know all those things. So my accepting that people would not accept me makes me have <laughs> an easy life of saying okay. I would have loved to be with you, but I know I can't be with you because I've got this, but that's who I am and, and that's it. And my understanding, because also it, it, because you get angry at people, rejection is not nice. 
rejection is not an easy thing, especially when you're rejected where you think you have interests. But also if you are rejected for your truth, but what do you want to do? Everyone knows my story. So I can get somebody and I hide the whole world would be telling them about I am. So better from me. And yeah, but that, that's what it happened. I hope I've answered the question. Thank you. Thanks, Musa, for that. Start, Mamorena, I see your hand up. Can you please ask your question. Thank you, Chairperson. Good afternoon to, to all the colleagues. Uh, Sis Musa, that time. Yes. I just went to that day. If my uncle, uh, his name was Isaac, if he was still alive, trust me by the next time you get basic basis of that is so is he my question can you hear me i yes i can hear okay my question is a bit similar uh you know with the the, the last question from the last speaker though i was gonna phrase it differently to say for you you, you know what was that well, what today we use figuratively so to say what was that damascus moment for you you know that moment where you stood there and said okay i'm now transitioning and yes i heard your response now saying that you know you had to separate yourself ne? from the whole situation that had happened now, the, the reason for, for me asking that question is that, you know, that was said to me so many times, by the way, in Kulelena Lady as well. So I'm not so far from you. So that was said to me so many times to say, you, you must separate yourself. Ne? And yeah. what, what happened is that I equally was coming back from work with a friend of mine and, um, funny enough wearing work uniform and uh, we were standing at a bus stop and a car stood there windows were opened guns were cocked in a full bus stop full of people we we were forced inside the car and not even a single person said or did nothing you know so fast forward a, you, we got raped, the both of us. And, you know, I mean, from the, the, the police station, I can assure you until today, I'm still waiting for a case number. Um, and, you know, just going through that period, you know, through the doctors and, and, and the therapists and all of those people, that is what was being said to me. And I just couldn't get it. And it made me more angry, my goodness. But my Damascus moment is, so I can't even remember if this was a doctor or this was a therapist who said to me, and very nonchalantly so, by the way, to say, ah, uh, you know, this was not personal, ne? And I just remember sitting, I promise you, I, was, I remember sitting on that chair, feeling something leave my body. And I couldn't explain it at that moment, but it felt as though I'm having an out of body experience. And for me, that was my Damascus moment because it was after those words were said to me, I, I started then the new journey of taking back my power because it had stolen something from me. It definitely has, had stolen my sunshine. It had stolen my spark. And you, you know exactly that, you know, you go through that period where you even ask yourself, could it be something wrong that I did? Is it something wrong that I said? I, I started even thinking, Uguti, was my, my work uniform maybe too tight, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. And that for me became my Damascus moment. And that's how I, I, I came out of it. And that's how I, I, I started fighting back but I can assure you, of course, even until today, I mean, just sitting here and listening to, to you know, to your journey, um, it, it, I couldn't help it. It took me back there, you know. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm quite interested in that. I mean, to, 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 to hear that you, you have forgiven them. And for me, I, 
I then was taught that you need to forgive yourself first. And that that was the other thing I couldn't understand to say, Jani, how do I forgive myself? Ganti, what did I do to myself? You know, but, you know, also with growing up and, you know, meeting the different people and going through the different challenges of life. And also some of the lessons to say, sometimes also when, and I love that part that you touched about us being constantly being reminded or being told or be demanded that we must be strong. Uh, and I guess sometimes they, they get directed by the kind of personalities that we have because if you get known or you demonstrate naturally so that I am actually a woman, you know, I'm an alpha female, me personally, you know, so my, my strong personality comes out effortlessly so. So unfortunately, sometimes Vele people, you, you know, they, they will automatically, that, that is the first thing they, they come out of, their, uh, uh, that comes out of their mouth. And yes, I find myself cringing sometimes because Sometimes really all I want now is just to break down, is to feel this pain, is just to cry it out of my system. And I'm sitting here, I'm wondering, how do we begin the process? And I suppose maybe that's question number two. How do we then begin the process of teaching people to unlearn some of these things? Because it's a process of unlearning. And worst part, how do we even teach men, our men, our men as in those that surround us from our families to, to our colleagues. Um, and you, you know, it, let it also be so unfortunate that I personally work in a male dominated industry. And you know, half of the time, the things that we hear as women in that space, my word, that some of the natural perception from men is that how do you fix a woman or each alayo, because those are some of the labels we get, you know, how do you fix yeah, a woman yeah. like yeah. that? How, how, how do you fix a woman who thinks is better than a daughter, you know, and you get told words like, oh, by the way, men don't want a woman like you. You, you know, those are, are daily things. And I'm not even talking about the Toza Zan last year. I'm talking about 2021 words that we, 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 we risk. And I don't want to glorify it and say we receive, but we've got ears, you hear them, whether you, 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 know, you validate it or not. And that is our current reality. So where do we begin? And maybe, maybe uh, you know, uh, the, the fellow gents can also then come in there to say, uh, guys, men, how do we as women equally help you so that we all help each other because for me, now, ever, ever since I've, I've had my Damascus moment, eh, Bona, I refuse for any man to speak to me. And some of the feedback I then get to say, yeah, hey, Shmamu, hey, sometimes you must tone down. Eh, yeah, you know, in order to, to, to fit in, in, yes, in order to, to, to live nicely. Uh, you know, with, with the other gender. Tone down, man, CC. You know, don't be too harsh. And I'm like, wow. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite interested because I, I'm glad that we talk about these things finally out in the open. But Mina, I'm, I, I would like, uh, and as a collective, as a collective, I would like us to start to say, okay, how do we then put our words into action? Slowly but surely, and yes, it will start with a small group, but we all can see ourselves. We've got all these young boys that are highly troubled. We see this in our personal relationships that we are having, that, you know, it's so difficult. It is so difficult. And yeah, so how do we help? How do we help? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh... Thank you very much for that. Uh, I, will answer the, I will answer the first question. Um, uh, and then the second question, I know it's going to go to uh, back to the chair. Um, I didn't have an 
a moment or at a mass moment mean and I didn't I think it, it was a build up of the thoughts that were happening that got me to this. My fear of knowing if I died, maybe from the from from AIDS um, at the time it was there, if I died, um my ta was a priority. I, I mean, I'm a compensating mom. I'm so one day we're gonna have things like that. Reason why I'm compensating so many things that I missed. My, my mom is not a bad person, not at all. But the way they, our parents showed love has been very different. And there's been so many times I wish my mom is very strict. So things they don't do. Um, so with me, I wanted to everything that I wanted to mom uh, and uh, that she did not do. I want to make sure that my daughter gets double of that and all those things. So my thought, knowing that my friend is not going to have this friend in her mom, her mother, uh, if I die, also was one of the things that motivated me. But it was not a once off where there's like, this is it, this is it, I got it. For me, it, it wasn't like that. It was a collective, so it, it was a, a number of things that I was thinking about constantly that made me remember. I remember, in fact, when they took me to the hospital and, and I said, I didn't know there was a scripture there and I said, I will live and not die. I didn't know why. I just didn't want to die. Even though I was very sick, I didn't, I never had the picture of, of, I didn't, I didn't, I just, I held on. It might also be supernatural that it's not called because um, that was a sober decision. I didn't have a sober decision to say, except for that. As to how it's that, I think I addressed it already. The mere fact that I'm glad that you 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 get to understand. I will also share more about those. Um, the reason I was not um, hesitant to be part of because uh, I tend to be selfish with myself now is because that they, they are now addressing exactly what you are asking. It's one of the platform. There might be others. This for sure. With the number of times I've attempted to to be a a man now, I've seen that it. Because I would wish it's addressed by people like that, the ones, the ones that we know do it, if it's asked by them. But the uh, chair is going to answer that one, make us as a collective, as you are saying, what do we do as a collective? I think also my day today is um, this that they are doing to say, let's have, let, let, let's talk about it, you know. So, but I think I'll give it uh, back to the chair. I hope I've attended or addressed everything that you wanted me to or on the questions that went to me directly. Thank you did, Aus Musa, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sis Musa, and thank you very much to Aus Mamu for that question. Uh, before we go to the next question, there's, there's, a, there's a naughty question in the chat box from o, o Palesa. Uh, Palesa says, can you sing Ingo Magakok? <laughs> <laughs> Opalisa to tell us to learn Gomaga Cock, and so can you sing Gomaga Cock? This is yes, in Umukana. All right, I think, uh, yeah, that's my my partner, a friend from long. I'm just going to say two lines um, from that song. Um, it says Linda Otanda, the Unga Yi Gugulwa, Kela Gains Uguzo, and Gain Kosina Mandla. Those are the lyrics. So, and it goes like, Linda, Utara, Unga, Yegu, Ula, Kela, Ngezi. So Don't do that again in a palace. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for that. I can see that it comes from the heart, it comes from the soul. And there's a there's a there's a comment in the inbox here from Osis Promise. Are may the Lord bless you financially so that you can open more institute for you to help others. And I want to pose this question to to men in this in this forum at this moment to say what are we doing? This is the first time that we as Saljek have a story to tell. 
this is not just any lecture, but this is a story to tell. And a story that is also challenging us as men within Saljek to ask ourselves to say, what are we doing? What are we doing? And I would like somebody to, to, to give me an answer to say, what are we doing? Are we only going to sit here and listen to Sismosa, go back to our normal lives and not care what is happening outside our world? So I would like somebody to, 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 to kindly, kindly answer me to say, what are we doing as men? Uh, Brother Piggy, I'm putting this to you. Uh, uh they will put him on the spot. Can you hear me, guys? Yes. yes yep. Okay, no, uh, Debza, you put me on the spot on this one because uh, after I listened to Ausmosa, it takes me away back and uh, it makes me think deeply. So, but as a man, we don't need to just go out and make a noise out there to talk about this thing. We need to act on it. Talking sometimes it doesn't work. We need to action every single thing because our lady here touches so many things, which is definitely, definitely like, takes me to so many things. I look at my two daughters. When things like this happen, I don't know how will I go through it. I don't know how will I take it. But as a man, as you said, there was a challenging us to start acting differently, to start talking different language. We definitely need to act. Action is better presently. Because the way things are happening, the way this Musa went through, as a man, Kenyatta Mugelinde. I don't feel right, Kenyatta. I don't feel like I was there. I was. I have to protect. But why am these men are doing this thing? And the answer to that, as I've said, I believe in action. As from today, as from now, whatever we do as a man, we need to act. Go out there to the community. Talk about this, and tell them what to do. We don't have just to mention it or not. We need to tell them what to do, what not to do, and what to do in life. It's very, very important. Uh, I think I'm very touched. I'll leave it here. Osmusa, I don't know. Much respect from you, sister. Gratis a bit is on a lesson. Gratis a bit is on a Thank you very much, Abdul Babiki. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I see Oba Nkosi has got his hands up. Mr. Nkosi, over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir, uh, Chairperson Debza. And I, I want to thank the two ladies for sharing their story. Um, I know them too well. I wouldn't have known, knowing their energy and their passion in life uh, had I not sit in this lecture. It's such a sad moment that um, as you said, Guti, all this is because of a man. I've got two daughters um, that I need to protect as the father and uh, such heaviness. But I guess that's the reason why I'm part of the Saljek um, club to say, let's do something to educate men. And there's a program that we are starting, which is led by the MD, Mr. Samuel Kalakala, of um, changing the men from the mind, especially that now that we are using it towards um, HEPV um, and, and empowering men from their space, little things that we can do in our own little space. We can't go and, and expect a change out there without changing ourselves and the uh, surroundings that we have. And uh, Obviously, I can't say they must be strong. Uh, they are beautiful. I mean, they've, they've shown, Wutim, if God has directed your path, no one can deflect it. It might take longer, uh, but uh, it will certainly come through. I appreciate them for sharing this moment with us and uh, sort of um, reminding us to say these things happen and we men are responsible for that. So it's a responsibility that we need to take and move forward and empower other young men and our peers as well to respect women. And, and, and I guess that's where we say, using the term to say our women, that's what makes 
uh, other men feel with their own women. I know that we don't mean it that way ourselves, but ultimately it becomes there to say, this is my woman and I can do as I please. Whereas if maybe I'm married to her, I feel I owe, own her, which is certainly wrong, but we are doing as little as we can in our own space uh, to, to um, empower ourselves and those around us. And thank you again for empowering me in particular to make sure that I'm in my own space, I become aware of what happens around me and I do something about it rather than blaming the politician, blaming everyone else but myself. So I appreciate that. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Musa. Thank you, Mamorena. Uh, I'm more empowered than I was yesterday. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Nkosi, for, for those words of encouragement. Uh, I'm looking at the time here. I see Dr. Knowledge got uh, his or her hand up. Can you, yeah, over to you, uh, Doctor. Th thank you, Chair, for the proceedings. Uh, let me take this privilege and acknowledge the two stories that were portrayed to us. It, it really resembles an element that we as a society, we spend much of our time in our own custody. Uh, our, as I was listening, it touched me because on Thursday, I happened to hear about a certain story that's similar to Usis Musa in a, in a place called Mafike in the Northwest. Uh, as I was listening, a young girl of 21 years old was stepped 35 times by the boyfriend. And the same guy wrapped the lady with blankets and hidden the lady in an RDP for seven days. As uh, we were uh, trying to assist the community, by the way, I'm, I'm heading the community radio station in Northwest as a chairperson of the board. So as we listen to the story, we, we then simulated to send our people on the ground to find the story. I, I listened to Usis Musa because we need people of a stature to do similar things in a lot of community radio stations in a form of life coaching, because society that we are living in, not only as men, we are living in a society that is totally out of disgrace. I, I listened and I remember a, pay, a piece of paper that I wrote, and I asked a question, how did she manage to do let go? Because most of us as society, we are unable to let go. And as you are speaking, I remember a quotation of a Chang Li, is a Japanese guy who says, the amount of happiness that you have depends on the amount of freedom you have in your heart. If, if you want to be happy, you need to free your heart from the pain that you suffer. And if you can't let go of the pain that put you in imprisonment, it, it led to what is happening. So as a society, I, I do agree with uh, Mr. Rasinyalo said, we, we as men in this country, we must stop talking the talk, but the act, the act of our actions. And as much as small groups of platforms like this will be able to assist our young men who are coming, will be also doing embracement to say, women are not object. And we should go away from this cultural norm of thinking that women, we are entitlement of certain wrong things as society. In, in conclusion, Chair, I, I want to say there are a lot of things that we need to know, but the most important thing is that if you let go little, you have a little of peace. If you let go of a lot, you have a lot of peace. In other words, as men, we need to let go of this entitlement of wrongdoings and be able to let go of wrongdoings and gain more on happiness and everything. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Rasinyalo, to invite me in this platform and then talk uh, leadership and our guests. It really, really eye-opening me. As part of my little job that I do in the Northwest as a life coach, it also uh, enlarged my capacity of knowledge and be able to cascade that information further. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Knowledge. Uh, I'm going to give it to Chair. Uh, Mr. Tabakwe, uh, in three minutes, uh, we we running out of time. Three minutes. Thank you, Leadership Manager Gun. Thank you for everybody who's 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 throwing their weight behind this. Uh, first of all, let me just try and address the question of Ausmosa uh, in a way that could be a suggestion or the solution to uh, the antidote to the challenge that our communities, societies, and our women are facing. This thing, uh, we need to realize that each and every one of us, uh, we have this thing. Uh, that's why they say every man is a potential rapist. 
uh, everybody's potential murderer and all those things. They call it a Wotiko effect. And if you look at the dictionary meaning of Wotiko, Wotiko, it will tell you that it's an evil spirit that is hovering inside of us and is going with us everywhere we go. So this, the, the antithesis of Wotiko, it's, it's being a good person of God, love and respect and protection of others. But in this case, uh, it depends inside of you, which one are you feeding more and which network and society are you keeping company of and friends. So the Wotiko inside of you will always try to raise its head out. And, and you, therefore it means you need to be very strong as an individual. Uh, strong as, as you know, when we growing up, parents always used to say, uh, show me your friends and I'll tell you what kind of a person you are. So if you keep wrong company of friends, if you keep wrong uh, uh, friends that even their language, it's not suitable for the ears of your children. You must know that you are busy feeding your wutiko. It's growing inside, it's growing inside and anything is possible. Tomorrow I can be accused of having killed someone and everybody in here will be shocked or ha, this guy has been playing to be holy, holy. We walk around with the devil, the utiko that is inside of us. So any moment that can happen to us. How do we protect or prevent uh, ourselves from walking, uh, uh, from utiko taking over uh, us and, and, and leading us to do things that we see many men do end up in jail. And once they're behind bars, they, end, they start saying, I'm sorry, I'm apologizing. I don't know what happened, all that. How do we prevent that? You keep those good friends, the proper friends. And let's talk about a mobile phone. Let me make an example of a mobile phone. Here you've got a Samsung, a phone, Nokia, whatever it is, you've got a mobile phone. That phone comes with a little manual inside. That manual, it's, it's the truth about the product, that manual. It's a truth about this product, how it functions and how it will give you time and enough time to perform what you bought it for or what it was made for. But if you take this mobile phone and it has a problem to a backstreet mechanic down there, the backstreet mechanic doesn't know this product because he has not made this product. Chances of this product, if it's a 10 year guarantee, the guarantee is going to fall off. So what I'm trying to say in that the Majogan is, as men, we have shifted away from our maker. We can really try to run away from that or whatever. We have shifted away from our maker. And whether it's deliberate or it's, it's, it's circumstantial, it doesn't matter. But this is what is happening here. We have shifted away from our maker. And as a result, the Wotiko in us raises its head every now and then because we are reacting to every situation that comes around us. So we keep wrong friends. Sometimes we are not even aware that they are wrong because our parents are not there. We've got many children who are fatherless children out there, but the fathers are there somewhere. So these children are not growing well, so they might not know what is right and wrong. And I'm grateful to God that he has gave us time because time, if you're not aware, it's the best thing that God could have ever gave all of us. Time has saved us from eternity. Imagine if there was no time, the ordeal that Sismosa went through would still be continuing today. But because of time, the ordeal was meant to happen from one o'clock to two o'clock or from three days to four, to four days. That time got her out of the ordeal. She lives with it. She shares that. She's not mopping and sitting it and say, this is what has happened to me. She's a gift and God was not going to allow it to go Sismosa because many of us needed to be changed today. Uwa Bunkosi said uh, he's more empowered than he was yesterday. I'm sure many of us here are really truly empowered more than we were. So the last point is fighting this butiko. It's what we said in our last board meetings, that we need to leave the Salbeck brand, Tina Matot, within the club. In other words, the circles around us, we need to be very influential on the circle of people who are around us. If we men can start talking to other men and showing our conviction of what we stand for, and not only be Saljek when we are at Saljek, be Saljek even if we are outside Saljek, and be a man of conviction, higher moral conviction, we are able to eliminate the space that these people are traveling in, because that's going to start isolating themselves and they'll have very narrow space to operate. 
But the more we sit and we keep quiet, the more the room street, room our streets uh, free, going up and down and doing as they want. They have taken our lives. They have conquered us. It's about time that they, as you said, that we must start doing something active. In other words, we leave the brand. We start talking. You don't wait for a subject meeting. Call the guys in your neighborhood. We know there's lockdown and all those things. Call the guys, let them sit in their backyard. Let's start having these conversations. Every weekend, let's know Rakuhatebs, Machita. Every Rakupa Mama. Let's go to the park chance. Let's go and talk about these things. So that as partners of these ladies, as partners of we men that were given to us, we are given the most powerful uh, uh, partner on earth. Another man who even has a womb to make a child. But we are there, we don't appreciate what we've been given. But maybe it's because we didn't know, because our fathers did not tell us because they were not there, or our mothers could not tell us because they were overwhelmed with raising us and all that. But it's our turn, guys. Let the excuses stop. Don't wait for a subject meeting. Let's start having these regular meetings. We know we spoke of clubhouses, but in the journey to open the clubhouses, let's start having our regular meetings. C3, HRT, C4, C5. So can I say C20? The spirit is growing. And when we do that, the Wotiko goes down, it sinks down. The strength of who we are, not the strength of the victims we are, the strength of who we originally are, the spirit that is inside of us grows stronger. We are able to, uh, to dominate that and put it aside. Because sometimes we say, that lady, whatever. It will happen to your mother, my brother. It will happen to your sister. It will happen to your wife. It will happen to your daughter. It will happen to your partner. So let us start doing something in our. Let's, when we talk at Saljek, everybody comes and say, Mina, in my part, this is what I'm doing. That's what action I think that the Papi was talking about. It, on my side, this is what, what I'm doing. Not I'm carrying a membership card of Saljek, but this is what I'm doing. I'm regularly calling meetings. I'm influencing the conversations. When you go on Twitter, someone is, 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 is spreading, the, it's, it's trending the conversations. Who creates those trends, those, those, those topics to trend? We need to be the ones that are dominating those conversations with proper topics. It needs to be inside of us if we want to bring a better tomorrow, if we want to have happy partners, happy marriages, and happy life. I thank you very much, Dr. Majoba. I thank you very much, Chair. I think we're going to have a stop. Thank you very much to Chair for that. Uh, what I would like to say before I close, because we are a minute over our time, uh, to you, Sismosa, any words of encouragement and any words that you can say in closing in one minute? I know that you've got a lot of air time, but one minute, please. Unmute. Hey, Mina. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. I do have one thing. Um, sis Mamorena, um, but to everyone else, I want you to know that with all the evil that is happening, there is somebody who is a who's very strategic, who knows it all, and there is a purpose why you go through it. Make sure you stay in that thing. Just go through. God is ready to take out. We have had to go through so that we can help those people who cannot be like us, be bold to talk, to share or to talk, but they somebody then talk. So you are used as a platform in a painful way as it is, but there is a pause and it's always bigger than the worst that you've ever been through. And thank you so much for having everyone that has been there. I appreciate respect. Thank you so very much. God bless you all. Thank you very much for your time. And I want to say thank you very much to everybody that has been part of this discussion today. What I'd like to say to you is let's stop being bystanders of pain and misery. Let's go out and act. We are being bystanders. And remember, you're not your pain, you're not your past, you're not your scars, but you are the soul that you have in you that is not touched. You are the spirit that is not touched. They can touch you, but your spirit will forever, forever take you to the next level. I'd like to say to everybody that came through, thank you very much for being part of this discussion. To all our guests, can you please uh, put your numbers on the chat box? 
or you can send us a message on 078, that's my number, 078-785-1313, 078-785-1313. Alternatively, you can go on to our website, ilsaljek.org.za, where you can also get contact, contact details for us to start our discussions going forward. And I'd like to say, until we meet again, to all the women in this call, nebase, nebase, no mabanya ni kule ni babi, but nam sanje ni base, ni base, ni base. Until you meet again. Until you meet again. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. It was your host, Mr. Mohamed Chokani. Then Plomenani. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chen. Thank you, Rashi. Thank you, Rashi. Thank you, Rashi. Thank you, Rashi. No, I'm still still still, I'm 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 still still, I